Thank you so much for joining this live with me. Um, uh, we're doing a, a fun I Want My Teen TV initiative all summer, and I can't think of a more perfect here. <laughs> so for everyone joining, um, this is Olivia. She's currently on Cruel Summer. She also had an amazing run on Marvel's Cloak and Dagger. So really just all over some great teen TV shows. <laughs> And uh, we'll get to talking to uh, you about Cruel Summer shortly, but first I wanted to get a little nostalgic and uh, look back on Cloak and Dagger with you. Um, even though it's been a minute, I'm still not really over the show getting canceled after that amazing finale. <laughs> Thank you. Same, same. It took me a minute to find some, to find some legitimate closure because I feel the same way. That show, it was, it really impacted my life in a real way. And so I'm, yeah, the closure was hard to find, but I eventually found it. And I'm still so grateful to have been a part of that show. Mm -hmm. And uh, the finale ended with, you know, Tandy and Tyrone leaving New Orleans together. So how did you feel about where the story ended for them? I, I mean, I was very excited about where they were going to go and what they were going to do. But ultimately, I feel like we saw them end in a place and in a place where like they were finally comfortable in a sense in their own skin and with each other. And I think that they had, they really had such like an incredible journey ahead of them. And I think, I think I found like the satisfaction of like knowing that they were on, gonna be on a good journey. I, th I think I found the satisfaction in that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think we lost you for a second. Uh-oh. Oh, there you're back. <laughs> no bueno. <laughs> but, um, you know, what was it like after, you know, getting to that point with um, the characters and then getting to do the amazing crossover with Runaways? So fun. We were wanting that for a very long time, too. We, the cast of Cloak and Dagger and Cruel Summer, or uh, Cruel Summer, um, <laughs> and, um, and Marvel's Runaways, I mean, we were itching for that for a very long time. So we were so happy that it finally happened. And we had so much fun. I mean, that cast is brilliant all around. And um, Aubrey and I were just so stoked to finally make it happen. Mm -hmm. And it was awesome seeing, you know, Tandy and Tyrone fully being Cloak and Dagger and, you know, having such their close friendship after working for two seasons to get to that point. I feel like that Runaways crossover was like the moment where we saw them being you know who they've been fighting to be for the entire Cloak and Dagger series. It's so true they really went on an intense journey together and even individually I think like that was ultimately like what drew me to the role and I think why a lot of people really related to it because yes they were like on a journey together but they were also figuring out who they were as individuals, which is what we're doing every day. So um, yeah, that both of those characters will always hold a special place in my heart. Mm -hmm. And what was that like for you and Aubrey getting to, you know, portray those characters over two seasons and the crossover episode? Like, did you guys have to like work on that on-screen dynamic or did it just come naturally for you? It came so naturally. We became such fast friends and when we did our chemistry read together, I think both of us like just felt so solid in what we did in that in that audition room. And whether we got the parts or not, like that was such a special audition. And um, when we saw each other at the airport to go to New Orleans for the first time, I think we were really stoked and just knew that this was going to be a, a really special experience for the both of us. Mm -hmm. And have you two kept in contact after, you know, the show ended and after you did the crossover episode? Of course. He will forever be a friend of mine. And I'm so proud of him and how passionate he is about everything in his life. I mean, he, you can just tell by the way that he, just observing him, like, on a set or even, like, out at lunch. Like, he just is so happy about what he does and and he's so driven and creative and he's just a brilliant human and I'm very lucky to have worked with him and to know him.
Mm -hmm. And what was your favorite part of getting to portray, you know, Tandy and Tyrone's connection? I think being able to tell like a real story, right? It, yes, it's in a it's in a realm of superheroes, and I think obviously like there's a tie to that that is fantasy, but I think being able to tell a real story about like what it's like being a woman in America today and how we are sometimes minimized and not l looked at as the leader or the powerhouse of a company or, tr or like our, our tribe of people or in mostly in a work space. Right. But I, I even like the realm of like what it's like being like a young black boy in America and the 2020s and I think like we were really transparent about that and we told honest and raw stories and I think just that relationship alone like them learning those little elements about each other was so important and I think that that is what impacted me the most on the show as well mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That was, you know, what so many people related to and, and found to be so fresh and exciting, especially, you know, set in the Marvel world, you know, we'd never really gotten a story like that. So it was awesome to, to see that. And I, I'm still so sad that we didn't get any. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm so happy to know that people were invested in that show, though, because it definitely changed my life for the better. And so, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for that. <laughs> and so, you know, obviously we saw them leave New Orleans in the season two finale. We got to see them with the runaways. Where do you think they would be now? Oh, man. I don't know. Conquering the world. I feel like they just had so much, so much to give. And I think that they would just, I, I mean, in a ideal world I would want them to be on the Avengers team <laughs> just like I know I but that's you know that's where I live in my own head um but yeah I think that they would just be conquering and just crushing it in in their lives wherever they are absolutely I can't see them not crushing it because they were just so awesome together <laughs> I know I know I agree and um, now let's talk about Cruel Summer. And I can't think of a more perfect time because there's a new episode tonight. So what can you tease about what fans can expect from tonight's episode? Happy birthday, Kate Wallace. This episode and the following episodes after that are probably our strongest and most important episodes because we start getting answers tonight. And... <sighs> I know, I know. <laughs> this is like the moment everybody's been waiting for in Cruel Summer. They're like, I want answers. Tell me everything. <laughs> um, but yeah, tonight we find out a lot of things. We find out a lot of things. And so I think this is like the beginning of the beginning of all of the questions that people have been asking. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that makes me so excited because every episode has been incredible. And I love, you know, coming up with theories to all the questions that have been raised, but to finally start to get answers, I feel like it's going to be an even more exciting watch because I've been hooked from the very beginning. I know so many people have the twists Thanks. and turns have really been getting us, but get finally getting answers. That's uh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I know it's going to we're spilling the tea tonight. It's, it's happening. We're finally going to do it. So I think people are going to be very satisfied with, all of the, with the ending and, and, and all of the questions that are going to be answered. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously no spoilers because we don't want to spoil any fun, but of course not. let me tease about, you know, where this episode does leave us. Like, is this going to leave us on a massive cliffhanger? Is it going to be more of an emotional moment for Kate? Both. <laughs> both and in the best way possible I think the way that we leave tonight's episode is one of the biggest questions that I think people have been asking so we do leave it we leave it on a cliffhanger 
but I do think it's incredibly emo like emotional um, for Kate. Oh, wow. I just got like chills. I'm so excited. <laughs> I hope you like it. I feel like I'm hyping it up now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can overhype this show. It really has been so impressive with how many like twists and turns like I haven't been able to see coming and like I watch a lot of TV so I can usually predict things pretty well. Yeah. I have not been yeah. able to predict anything on this show. <laughs> well, good. Good. I hope you like the end. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's, um, before we talk about, you know, the ending, let's talk about, you know, in the past few episodes, we've seen Kate kind of falling a little bit more and more under Martin Harris's spell, which we as the audience know is problematic. But what is going through Kate's mind through throughout this time? Because she obviously has no idea, you know, how how problematic this really is. Sure. Um... I think with the interaction that we've seen between Kate and Martin, it's, they just connect, you know? I think that they find themselves within each other a little bit. And I think Kate is a little bit more wise beyond her years than we know. And she f finds the maturity in Martin. And I think that there's something there that she is that's what she's craving, I think, in her life is to have real deep, like, conversations that are just in depth. And I think, like, that's that moment, if we go back a couple of episodes, I believe it's episode four, where we see Kate and Martin on the hunting trip, looking up at the stars and talking. I think that she is so, like, enamored in that moment, just with him and the conversation. And I think that she just craves more of that. And I... I, I, I think that she trusts him and I think that we're going to see her go on a really intense journey um, with him after this mm -hmm. episode tonight. It's interesting. Do you think that it's because Kate has been put in this like box her whole life of being just like the pretty Southern girl who like isn't really expected, there isn't anything expected more of her? Easily. Easily, yeah. I think that she's been living in her mom's shadow and she isn't that. I think that she has so much more to offer and I think that she ultimately like wants to have a vision for herself and for her life. And I don't think that she's ever been able to do that because she's had her mom constantly telling her how she's going to live her life and what her future is going to be. And so I think she's finally like in 95 when we see her, she's finally like making decisions for herself and forming her own opinions and being the leader that she is. Mm -hmm. And speaking of, you know, how you have to play these three separate timelines, Kate is obviously so different in each one. How did you approach getting in, you know, each specific timeline and, you know, making sure that they're so differentiated, but still ultimately the same person throughout the mm. entire thing. Yeah, it was really challenging. <laughs> it was really hard, but it was so fun. I mean, as an actor, I think you want a good challenge. And this was that for me. It, yes, I had to play three different versions of the same character, but each version is so important to the story. And so I think... I, I, and because of everything that she goes through, they had to be different. You know, you, maybe you don't change a lot in three years or in one year, year to year. But when you go through something that sh as traumatic as she went through, I think you do, you, you learn more about yourself and you do have an, an, an intense change in your life. Mm-hmm. I think she was finally in 95 showing her interior all along on the exterior, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. like that the makes sense. Sometimes I say things and it doesn't make sense out loud. <laughs> I don't, I, it only makes sense in my head. <laughs> <laughs> no, that makes sense. I feel like you're, you're right. Cause like the trauma is like kind of what took away like the outer shell of like this facade that she had put up. And I, I think that is when we finally do get to see the real her. And it's just so sad that it had to come through no. such a heavy, time yeah. experience I know I know but it's interesting how 
And I did a lot of research on this and had to really educate myself in this world because I've never been through something traumatic like that. And I think it's important for people to know that when you do go through something tr as traumatic as something that she went through, you have to learn how to not let it control your life. And that's what she did. She learned how to not let it control her life. She built a, she built a wall for a while, but slowly started tearing down that wall and like revealing her true colors and 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 now is trusting has a friendship with Mallory where she feels like she can totally and completely be herself which is massive like that's such a huge step for her you know yeah the her friendship with Mallory really came out of nowhere because no one I think predicted that they would become friends but it's like weirdly the best thing that could have happened to Kate. I, I love seeing how that friendship is helping Kate grow and kind of move past what happened to her and become her true self. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's true. I think that relationship is so important for us to see and they think they both have been through a lot. And I think that's probably why they become so close, but ultimately I think their transparency is what brings them together. And I don't think we see a lot of that in this show. A lot of people are hiding secrets and they're not being honest. And this relationship is the most real and normal. And I think that's Kate is desperate for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like every other relationship in her life, even with like her, her sister, she's talking to in chat rooms and doesn't actually know it's her sister. Like Mallory is really the only one who says what she means and isn't lying to Kate. And I feel like that's so important for her. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. So what are we going to see from that friendship moving forward? Hmm. We're going to see, to, in tonight's episode, we're going to see it blossom. We're really going to see their friendship unfold in such a beautiful way. And I think, you know, the phrase, you're maybe I'm, I think I'm about to butcher it. Um, <laughs> the phrase where it's your friends are the family you choose. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. um, that I think that was sort of like my theme for this episode because the way that we see their relationship unfold is that it's, you start to see like why we choose people to be our friends, why we choose people to know little details about us that not everybody gets to know. And I think this episode tonight really shows that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And um, when you, when it came for you to um, portray all three versions of Kate, was there a timeline that was the most difficult for you to kind of get into the mindset of? 94, 94 Kate, cause that's when she's, being held captive and yeah, we had some heavy scenes and that was really difficult for me to just jump into that heavy emotion. So 94, the year 94, every time I saw it on the call sheet, I was like, okay, now I gotta like make sure that my tub of ice cream is ready for me when I get home. <laughs> that sounds like the perfect way to unwind. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Just like draw myself a big bubble bath and then eat ice cream and sob. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, you know, that timeline or even the entire experience of playing Kate, did that stick with you even after the camera stopped rolling? Of course. Yeah. I've, I've, I have a really difficult time like getting out of that space. Um, but I was really lucky because there was just a lot of communication on the show and with our creative team, Bill Purple, who directed episode two and 10, um, also one of our executive producers, he was just so adamant about giving me that space and just respected that space for me because I'm sure that gets to jump in and then jump jump out. It's just not my process. I like have to really invest myself in it. So yeah, it was tricky. Mm -hmm. And um, looking at the, the mysteries of the show, there's been a lot of fan theories about what's going on. So have you been like keeping your eye on, you know, the internet and reading all those fan theories as the show has 
progress. Of course, absolutely. And everybody is, some theories are pretty wild and out there, but <laughs> there's also theories where I'm like, they should be writers. They're so good. Um, but yeah, I, people, there's some people who are really on track with the show, which honestly makes me really stoked because I feel like they are really invested in it and they're watching every single moment. Cause this isn't a show that you just have on as like white noise while you're doing your homework or while you're like catching up on emails. Like it's not that kind of show. You have to invest yourself in the show and, and watch everything and listen to everything because it all matters. It all ties in at the end. I know. I feel like that's been so fun as like a fan to watch because even tiny little like looks exchanged between people and little lines here or there, little tiny moments. I feel like that's been what's fueling a lot of these theories. And yeah. I think yeah. it'll be so interesting to see what actually is true and what isn't. I know. It's so true. And I think the people's opinions are changing each episode, but it's good that that's happening because... I think in the, in the next couple episodes, people will solidify their answer and then they'll find out what it, who, who did what, who done what. <laughs> Do you have any favorite fan theories that you've seen throughout the season? Um, yeah, I feel like the, my, I mean, ultimately my favorite are the ones that are, that are pretty on point with like where our show's going because I know that they're watching it. Um, but I don't know. I'm trying to think. I The Annabelle ones are really good because we don't know who Annabelle is yet. And so the theories about Annabelle are so good. They're so, they're hilariously good. Um, and I'm only laughing because obviously I know who Annabelle is. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but nobody else does so the theories are really incredible because everyone's just like deciding who it is and mm -hmm. they're like this is who it is and I'm sticking to it and I love that <laughs> have you seen obviously you know don't say which ones but have you seen any mm -hmm. theories get it like totally 100% right no Oh, I have not. I've seen them get close, but no, not right. Oh my gosh, that is really exciting because I feel like there's so many theories that I've seen or even thought of that I'm like, oh, it has to be, it has to be that, but I know. Well, no one's got it. <laughs> no one's got it. No one's got it. It's funny because like not even my family knows um, the ending. So my parents will call me and they'll be like, so here's, here's what happened. And they're like, is that what happened? And I'm like, I can't tell you. They're not right, though. <laughs> they're not. They're not close. But I also didn't know the ending until we were filming episode nine. Um, so I had all these theories, and I was wrong, like, four times. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot of theories. There's a lot of different ways that this show could end. Was it hard for you keeping that secret even from, like, your closest family? Yes and no. Um... Mostly no, though, because I'm obsessed with this genre and I, I wouldn't want anybody to spoil it for me because I really love, like, figuring it out by myself. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's a lot of people that get a lot of anxiety about, like, not knowing the ending. And um, I totally understand that. But I think this one is worth the wait. Mm -hmm. Worth the wait. Yeah, I, I have a couple friends that love to read the end of things like on Wikipedia before they watch it. And I just could never do that. That's why I love that this show is week to week, because the answer is not out there yet. So people can catch up by the time that like the last episode airs and then everybody knows at the same time. And it's also really interesting. I had this conversation with somebody the other day about how people aren't, I guess now no one's really going into the office, but on zoom meetings or whatever or in just in general like conversations with people they can't have conversations with people about the week to week showing of the show anymore because when it is all just dropped at once you can't talk about because everybody's in different places of the show and like you can't really like dissect and discuss like up until like the moment that everybody has seen so 
I don't know if any of that made sense. Once again, I don't know if, ever, if I'm ever articulating anything correctly. <laughs> but I do know that I, I love that this show is week to week because I feel like it's giving people the opportunity to catch up and talk about where they're at in the season and, and what they believe and what they don't believe. Yeah, it's definitely a rare occurrence for people to watch a show week to week now and be at the same yeah. point, be able to have those conversations. So I think yeah. you're absolutely right. That is a, a big part of why everyone's been loving the show. Yeah. And, um, you know, let's, you, you mentioned Annabelle. So I did want to dig into that a little bit. We obviously don't know much about who Annabelle is other than Kate has mentioned this name during her therapy sessions and she doesn't really have any memory of it post, you know, in the 1995 timeline. So what can you tease about what we're going to learn from that mystery going forward? Mm. I haven't thought about this. I haven't thought about this. I don't know how. I don't know how. Um, I guess something that I could tease is that it is true. Um, Kate does not know or remember Annabelle, um, where the name comes from, how it correlates with her and the slightest, but we will find out. <laughs> Is that helpful? Was that a good tease? <laughs> I feel like it, it means the fact that you can't really tease anything more means that it's going to be even more like of a crazier reveal. <laughs> I think what I can tease is that it is a massive reveal. It's mm -hmm. not something that we should just like be like, oh, okay, like we'll figure it out. Like it's a massive reveal. Mm -hmm. I guess and <laughs> that makes me even more excited and even more nervous because I just want the best for Kate and I'm very worried oh, about her. <laughs> I know. I'm very worried about her too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, her journey has been very dark and traumatic so far but how much darker is it going to get before the season ends darker Oof. darker oh. darker darker in the way that we're just gonna go more into pre being held captive um we obviously already know that information and I'm sorry for anybody that's watching this and I'm spoiling everything for you, but that just means that you need to go and watch Cool Summer. Um, I think though, it yeah, it's gonna get darker. It's gonna get heavier, it's gonna get darker. I think, like I said, tonight's episode, we get a lot of answers, but it does take a dark route. Like we, the, they're answers that we want, but they are answers that are really heavy. Mm -hmm. So basically everyone needs to watch tonight's episode live so that they don't get spoiled because it seems like this is not the one to be spoiled. Precisely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, more about um, Kate's relationship with her sister because in the past couple episodes, we've seen them starting to interact a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. They're talking in chat rooms and Kate doesn't know that who she's talking to actually knows her personally so what is that relationship going to be in how's that going to evolve moving you know through tonight's episode and onwards I think they sort of um obviously Kate just really wants to have a good relationship with her sister and wants them to be family and I think especially after finding out you know about the chat room situation I think it really pushes Kate away from what she's been desperately wanting for a very long time. Um, but Kate is, she can empathize and she can, I think she can come from a place of understanding and I think that's what makes her so resilient and strong. So I think we will start to see their, their sister relationship um, unfold in a really beautiful way, but um, yeah, I think that there is still, like, I think there's a lot of resentment there, you know, because all Kate wants is honesty. She just wants the truth. She just wants transparency, and nobody's giving that to her, not even her own family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if only people would just start telling the truth. So many issues would be it's, e it's easier to do than people would think, right? <laughs> 
And um, something that I've loved throughout the season is how the show has been using like the the theme of mirrors or the mirrors in general. Like we had that really cool scene where um, Kate and Jeanette were chasing each other through the funhouse mirrors and every time Kate and Jeanette look at each other or look at in the mirror at themselves, like mirrors have obviously been a really interesting tool in the season so far. So is that something that you had noticed throughout filming? Of course. Yeah. There were, there was definitely um, a vision for the show and for each year, you know, I think that our show is very stylistic and cinematic, but you can tell like for 93 and 94 and 95, there's different filters. There's a specific way of shooting. We, um, our DPs would always walk around set being like, we're gonna do the cruel summer thing in this scene. And there is like specific shots that we do that make our show, um, our show. And um, yeah, it was definitely something that I noticed when we were filming and something that I didn't know that I was so interested in until this show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been very cool how you, even when you get the the years at the beginning of the episode, you don't really need that because you it's very clear of like which time is which time just based on how it looks and it is very cinematic in a cool way. Yeah, yeah. And um, there's only a few more episodes left until the finale, which is crazy. I don't know where the time has gone, but what can you tease about where the show is heading through the rest of the season? Oof. Buckle up, folks. <laughs> Buckle up. It really is a wild ride. Um, like I said, the last couple of episodes are really strong. And I think the rest of the season is just more twists and turns, but answers are coming. Um, spilling a lot of tea. A lot of the tea will be spilt. <laughs> in the last few episodes. <laughs> Some piping hot tea. <laughs> hot tea. Boiling. <laughs> and uh, I know you can't say about, you know, where the finale ends or how the season ends, but what was your reaction when you read the finale script and how it does all end? It took me a minute to process, but I was very satisfied. And the way that it's executed, because I've seen the finale, the way that it's executed, I think everyone's going to be very happy with it. Amazing. Well, I am so excited to see where the show goes. I have no idea where it's heading, but I am <laughs> definitely along for the ride. <laughs> well, thank you for watching. I so appreciate it. And I'm glad that you're into it. Oh, yeah. I mean, everyone in the comments is, I, I've been reading the comments as they've, as they've been uh, scrolling and they are hooked. Thank y'all. Thank you. <laughs> so watch tonight's new episode of Cruel Summer Live or else you will be spoiled. And that does not sound like this is one you want to be spoiled on. No. Mm -mm. Go watch it. Go catch up. Go catch up if you're not caught up. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, thank Olivia. You. This was Good awesome. Good to see you. Thank you so much. You too. Have a good week. Bye, everybody. Bye.